Time now to take a look at stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. And joining me via Skype is Jason Ukwade, Chartered Accountant and Public Affairs Analyst. Good morning. Thank you for joining us in TVC Breakfast. Good morning, Veronica, and thank God for another week. Absolutely. Let's head straight to the papers now. And I begin with uh, the blueprint. As resident doctors suspend strike, federal government splashes 13.6 billion naira on uh, 55,031 health workers' insurance allowances. And then we move to the front page of the national economy. Nigerian waters becoming safer as new anti-piracy initiative records gains. To the front page of the leadership newspapers now, interstate ban, transporters groan as uh, Federal Executive Council reviews guidelines Wednesday, we can no longer feed our families, drivers, commuters, the cry hike in transport fare. And to the front page of the Daily Trust, Buhari makes 141 appointments in 81 days, highest since assumption of office. Recent actions will fast track governance. President's new chief of staff settling down well. And to the front page of the Daily Times, Nigerians will pay for electricity if Oshibaju says federal government targets 25 million homes for microgrids across Nigeria. And finally, on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct, 27.5% CRR default, CBN sanctions, Tambic IBTC, Standard Chartered, Citibank, others 216.11 billion naira. All right. Uh, Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami has written to the President recommending the sack of the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu. This is a memo to the President. The uh, AGF says the recommendation is hinged on many grounds ranging from diversion of looted, uh, recovered loot to insubordination and misconduct by the acting EFCC chairman. The Attorney General of the Federation also shortlisted three candidates to be considered as uh, Mr. Magu's replacement. Uh, Shesson, this story, although not on the front page of the newspaper this morning, but certainly I believe it would interest you. Uh, recent developments with uh, the acting chairman of the EFCC, he seemed to have been fighting for his position and his life since 2015. Let's get your reaction to this development first. Thank you very much, Veronica, for having me. Uh, if you look at the uh, tussle between Malami, the AGF, and the acting EFCC chairman, it uh, gives a recall back to what we've always been clamoring for, uh, building institution and not building people. You mm -hmm. see, when you have an institution, this kind of scenario that is happening between the AGF and the acting EFCC chairman will be made known to us. But we have, uh, in, our, in our nation, we've continued to build round individuals, are calling them a lot of applause of their achievement without having 100% transparency. See, we have said that the government should look through to have an institution which will be so transparent. It's not about somebody recommending for a sack. Margo has actually been struggling for his life. He has his own, he, he, no man is perfect. He has done the few he feel he can do. But when you have a, a, an institution that is built and people just have to key into such thing, you will not see anybody challenging it. You have all the track records, you have all, all that one needs to do and it's being monitored. If it is not there, we will be able to pick on it. If you read through some of the things that the AGF has accused uh, Magu of, to me, issue from, from what we read, I, I did not really not have access to it. We were told that uh, instead of declaring that the uh, 534 billion was credited to CBA, mm -hmm. and in the record we have 509. That is a surplus that should be a praise, but uh, because everybody in government know themselves when you are over declaring to the people and your book is underestimated it that means there's a problem there is a gap 
And that gap must definitely be accounted for. I remember those days in the banking sector. If you have an overing, it's a, it's a problem for you than when you have a shorting. Because something must have went wrong somewhere. And it's on that part that the AGF is holding the uh, uh, acting uh, EFCC chairman to come and give account and that he has diverted funds. But what we want to re-emphasize here is that we should build an institution where system works, irrespective of the person you are bringing in you have a plugin that the person can do whatever he wants, and this will not be seen as either the uh, AGF is which hunting him or the man is struggling for his life. Uh, are you saying that perhaps there is more to this than uh, we know as we speak? Because, like you pointed out, uh, discrepancies with what he declared, and he also talked about uh, he perhaps, uh, if I might want to put it in clear terms, insubordination and the things like that. This, are you saying these are not things that should warrant his, the call for his removal? You see, insubordination in the work setting is a grievous thing. Like you always tell people, you can't know more than your boss. And that's why at times when we want people to be put in place of authority, you want to look at their credibility. You know, situation where a, 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 a lower cadre person have more understanding that is superior. The superior is already the problem. And what uh, AGF is clamoring for is that the man hardly make full reports to him Possibly, he does bypass him and go straight to the presidency. And here we want to put it straight that if there are hierarchy, that's part of the, the formation of an institution. Definitely, there will be hierarchy of people to report to. If at any point you bypass your direct boss, his great uh, insubordination and must be dealt with. I'm sure that if that is what is happening between AGF and uh, 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 and uh, the the acting general uh, EFCC chairman, that means he himself cannot take it because you cannot have somebody underneath you reporting directly to the presidency and you are not carrying your direct boss because he's directly responsible to the minister of justice who is the AGF. But we've been hearing that most of the information that should be made preview to the AGF are not known to him and the little that he has, he is turning it around to uh, to actually haunt uh, Mr. Mago of, but, the, of but, his position. But somehow, some cross-section of Nigerians have come out to say that uh, at this point in the president's fight against uh, corruption, uh, his anti-corruption fight, that uh, the timing might not just be right if we are calling for his removal. Uh, no, uh, uh, like, like we all know, less than uh, two years, Mago will be 60 and he will be due for uh, uh, retirement and service. If what he has done up till now is uh, satisfactory to the presidency, I'm sure the continuity of it will be there. Uh, bringing in somebody when he has not uh, finished his lap. You see, we should stop this idea of breaking system in between. Once we are able to bring somebody on board and we have tested some of the, uh, the, the, the things he has done, that's where the KPI always come in place. What is his performance since his assumption to his employer, the people that have recruited him, and even the fillers from the people? If he has performed well, irrespective of anything that has happened, we should sustain that till his period and monitor things. You see, if we don't have the right institution, it will be difficult to monitor things. And this issue of which until we continue, it will continue. We need a, an institution. We need a system where things works on its own without the input, without without the influence of anybody. Things just you just plug in. If you need to post this, it goes to the right. And those things are made known to the public, not to be influenced by anything. But a situation where our institution is not strong enough that we have to rely on uh, make, make things subjective and not objective. We will continue to have this kind of trade words between the superior and the subordinate. Because if there is an institution, I'm sure the first person to have access to some of this information or even give approval will definitely be your direct boss, which is the AGF, not hearing information from third party. So we need to build a strong institution that will make things work and not building things around individuals. That's why we always have problems that when they exit, there's always a gap, there's always a lacuna for us to fill. I think it's high time that we build the right institution for us to have more success. All right, Shasan Kwade, we'll leave the conversation here now. Thank you so much for speaking with us.